Yeah, yeah right? Yes. Cool. Deal? Doing. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community and Business. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community and Business. module for that there of course there is the uh, incredible silence that you hear is the sound of Drupal being made over in the sprint room we're at Drupal camp Brighton and I apologize to everyone that I've taken Karen Gray away from making Drupal better for a quarter of an hour how's your um how's your camp been yeah, it's been really fun. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. How many have you been to? What camps? Yeah. Uh, only a couple, but um, I think my first DrupalCon was back in London in 2011, maybe. Right. Uh, yes, DrupalCon Croydon was. It was Croydon, yeah. <laughs> 2000, 2011. So, Karen, tell us something about yourself. Where do you work? What do you do? Uh, at the moment, I'm a uh, senior Drupal developer for President. Um, that's based in Worthing, um, but we've got offices in London, uh, Cardiff, Edinburgh, Sydney, Hong Kong. Wow! Yeah. So how many people? Global. How many? How many people work for President? Uh, about a hundred. And uh, is it an all Drupal shop? No, no. It's it's a, it's a digital agency, so we do quite uh, it's quite broad. So we do like Drupal development, we do site core development, we do UX consultancy design. So it's it's all around really. Hmm. Um. How did you tell us uh, the story of you finding Drupal? How did that happen? Okay. Um, so I used to um, go to the University of Sussex, which is just around the corner from here. Um, and when I graduated, I started a internship program uh, with a company called Wide Sussex. And they got me a, um, a job doing uh, PHP Drupal development uh, with a company called White Hat Media, um, which is uh, done by Kevin Elliott, who's here today. Uh, he's one of the camp organizers. Yeah. Yeah, so it was him that got me into uh, Drupal development. So I've got him to thank to really. <laughs> right, but you stuck with it. What made you what what made it. what made you stick with it? Uh, well, I was doing PHP and MySQL for a couple of years beforehand, anyway, um, and I actually built my own CMS uh, for my final year project at university. So I kind of understood what a CMS is and does, and that. Um, and when I was introduced to Drupal, I was like, oh, "This is pretty cool," and just stuck with it. What version of Drupal was that? Early six. Early six. Yeah. So your Full-time work is all Drupal 7 right now. Talk about the difference between the Drupal you discovered in Drupal 6 and what you get to work with now. Oh, that's a massive difference. <laughs> uh, when I first started out, um, there wasn't that uh, many contributed modules to what there is now. Um, so what you, would, what you could do was quite restricted. So we had to con constantly write custom modules, which was fine because that's what got me into back-end development and writing my own custom scripts. But what there is now, there's so many more, so much more people that are around to help and what you can contribute and what there is in the future. You can see what's being built. And like myself, I just um, uh, committed a uh, Commerce Smart Pay module that I wrote for a client because um, there wasn't anything out there. So I wrote it myself and um, it's getting reviewed at the moment. Right. So you've, you've, you've put that into the community repository? Um, it's sitting in my sandbox. It's getting reviewed by someone who works for Commerce Guys at the moment. Thank you so much. That That's is right. awesome. <laughs> Um, we will totally link to that if it, if and when it, uh, you know, meets the, um, uh, you know, famously strict uh, coding standard yeah. and uh, review process guide. I mean, it's good, right? Because Drupal code, for all that Drupal 7 is written in a kind of an old-fashioned way now, Drupal code is really clean, really good to work with. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I discovered that the amount of times I had to like tweak my code to make it match their code of conduct. Yeah. So for your employer, yeah. would you say that your ability to interact with the community, right, and do things like give modules back that then get reviewed by the security people, by your people who know the specific subsystems or they know e-commerce, um, what, how does that benefit you, your colleagues, your, your company? Uh, well, it was them that paid for my time to build the module so we felt it was necessary to uh, give it back to the community 
um, it gets our name out there, it gets us a bit more well known, and it's it's good for like the individual employees to get involved in what we're doing. So we're a bit more passionate, a bit more excited by what we do. But when you've got to submit that module, do you look over it twice, three times? Does yeah. <laughs> working with the community um, makes you sharper? It does, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's definitely made me look at my code a bit more. It's like, oh, I, I need to make this a bit better, <laughs> a bit more neater. Right, so one of the things that, that uh, I and, and, and a lot of us like to get the word out about is um, companies, and it sounds like Precedent really gets this, which is great, mm -hmm. um, but companies who just take Drupal and use it mm -hmm. are really missing out on about 70, 80% of the benefit they could have, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And allowing the Drupalists in the allowing, um, you know, making the Drupalists interact with the community brings so much more yeah. back to work, right? Yeah, this is why when um, uh, Gemma, who I used to work with actually at President, when she said she was organising this Drupal Camp Rise, and I was like, definitely going, I want to help out. <laughs> Fantastic. So what's your favourite thing about Drupal? Ooh, I don't know. Um, it's easy to use, I find. Um, they, when you start, it's, it is a steep learning curve. Um, but once you get into it and start enjoying it, it is very enjoyable. Um, I've used other CMSs, they're not fun to use, but this one. And it's just the people around as well, they're, they're, they are friendly, they're nice, they're understanding. You get some people who like, oh, this is my way, this is the only way it's going to work. It's like, I've, I've gone past those kind of people now. And I've met the people who are like, yeah, we'll, we'll help out in any way, it's a good way kind of thing. You were saying Precedent works with a lot of different technologies. Yeah. Can you compare the um, working with Drupal and open source technologies to um, perhaps your colleagues or the projects where there's proprietary software involved? Is there a difference? There is a bit, yeah. With um, Sitecore, it's a .NET uh, platform. So the way they work is different. They have to like purchase a license, they need specific servers for it. it to the client. It is quite costly because like a... a, a um, a license could be from like 20 to a thousand pounds and that's just a license just to use the software right you have to pay <laughs> and then you have to buy the specific development tool yeah. right and that's all the money you've spent before you know if it's even going to work yeah <laughs> um there's, yeah there's a bit of an expensive discovery phase when it comes to using light cycle uh um i'm really interested to see what happens this year with microsoft uh, open sourcing the different pieces of its stack now yeah um oh, uh, dot net was open source just the end of the year right yeah so that's that's certainly going to it has the potential to stir things up possibly possibly not with cycle <laughs> <laughs> i mean uh i don't imagine it will make site more site core development any more fun right but yeah. uh maybe maybe we're we, maybe we've got it completely wrong mm. and uh <laughs> I think the main reason why they, they, people do use Sitecore over Drupal is something to do with personalization. But trying to push the uh, fact that Drupal can do that is a bit tough. Right. Um, it's something which Drupal can build on. Right. But, so, and but that's the, the ability is there. Right. And that's the big new wave in sort of marketing technology, digital transformation, really yeah. specific targeting. And, um, uh, well, I guess it's appropriate to say it. Uh, Acquia has a personalization tool called Lyft yeah. that, um, that that we're pushing fairly hard. And it's it's really cool and it's exciting. Um, this is unplanned. It's not an ad, but um, personalization <laughs> is really, really important. And it's something yeah. that that um, uh, if we want to get into a lot of big projects, it, it seems to be it seems to be the next big wave yeah. through through apps, through the web technology. Yeah, definitely. What are you most excited about in Drupal 8? Not sure yet. Not sure yet? No, I need to play with it properly. But it does seem very uh, more mobile friendly uh, and across like different platforms, so like tablets, phones, desktops. It does seem much better for that. And um, it's more like UI friendly for like editors as well. Um, it's made like the whole content entry just a little bit better, isn't it? What is your favorite Drupal module? My favorite Drupal module? <laughs> Views? <laughs> Views? Okay, it's um, technically not a module anymore. No, so it's not. <laughs> what's your second favorite module? Ooh, I do actually like feeds. Feeds? Yeah. Feeds gets really fun. Yeah. Um, and uh, actually, excitingly, Drupal 8 
is fully restful now. So it just becomes a feed engine internally and externally. It's um, sort of taken over that whole functionality. That's yeah. I'm I'm really excited about what uh, what we're going to be able to do with that. Yeah. And what word mm. best describes Drupal? Powerful. Powerful. Yes. Fantastic. What have I forgotten to ask you? I've no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Karen, thank you so much for your contribution. Thank you. And I really look forward to seeing you again at one of these things. And um, yeah, thanks again. That's right.